reporting live from Lads Giddy, bright and sunny in this beautiful city of Lagos. You're welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Pomo Bespoke. Today, I want to address some of the questions that I've been getting on WhatsApp and all of the channels where I reach out to people who view my videos. And that's relating to why you have this bow, this, this misalignment of the top line of your loafer's shoes. Of course, we are interrupting our earlier scheduled series on how to make these. Bear with us. It is just to answer questions that we received. First of all, let's have some coffee and then we'll get on with the proceedings for today. So why does the top line of your loafer's shoes bow to pressure and what can you do to ensure that like dawn, it remains unbowed, unbent, unbroken? Unfortunately, the bowing of your top line is not the problem itself. It is a symptom of a much more fundamental problem or a conglomeration of many problems. So it is the symptom of a problem that can result from the patterns, can result from your lasting, and can also result from your bottoming. So let's explain. Watch this shoe now. As you can see, as it stands, the top line is not bowing. But watch what happens when I apply some pressure somewhere in the mid section of the shoe. So um, my hand is not giving enough pressure, but let's put a hammer here and watch. If we put some pressure there, the integrity of the top line remains. We put some pressure there, you see that it's starting to bow. So if the insole of your loafers is rigid enough to withstand the pressure that you will put at certain parts of the shoe, then it has some bearing on the integrity of your top line. So the key thing is how are you designing your insoles? If you design such that regardless of the pressure that you apply to the insole of the shoe, it would only bend at specific points where it should bend, aka just before the ball of the feet, then you stand a better chance that your top line will not, um, the integrity of your top line will remain in spite of the pressure that is coming from your feet. So as you can see, this insole here, the back part of it, just before the ball, is made rigid by the use of a harder fiber material and also using maybe a steel or wooden shank to keep that part rigid while the wearer of the shoe is walking so you know so you add a shank on the inside and ensure that the front part is flexible enough to imitate how the feet of the wearer will act while walking so the front part is flexible the back part is made rigid that's number one the second thing is the backstay that you're using now take a look i'm not sure because i skived the backstay very well um, the outline is not very clear but you can see that i'm using backstay that extends all the way to provide some arc support so towards the arc of the feet on both sides if you compare that with the standard backstay that you find in the market, you find that this is all fully too short. While that goes all the way up to there and all the way up to there, this one stops even before the um, heel. So you find out that it's not providing the support that you need in that area. And for this design of shoe, that you, the integrity of your top line stands the risk of being compromised if there is not enough support that's absolutely required. So you may have to construct your own backstays. Meanwhile, make sure you stick around to the end of this video. When you're designing the pattern and you're lasting your loafers, you must ensure that the top line clings to the last tightly. I have videos on how to do that lasting. Uh, you can check it out using the link supplied at the top right hand corner. Now let's talk about heel height, which is perhaps the most um, important thing that you must address uh, in order to obviate having this top line misalignment problem. If you check out this shoe, you'd find that placing it on a flat surface if you the toe spring around this toe is exactly what it should be you can see that my toe my thumb doesn't go past 
and the shoe is sitting flat on a flat surface. This is indicative that I have used the appropriate heel height. And I have mentioned in several videos how to calculate the heel height. You simply place the toe of the last on a piece of pencil on your um, thumb like that and then take the reading of how far off from the ground that the last leaves off of the ground. And that distance you have is the height of the heel that you are supposed to add to the shoe when you have finished construction. If you don't do that, you stand the risk of more pressure being on the parts of the shoe that will misalign your top line. What I mean is that with the right heel height, the pressure will somewhat be on the toes and not on the midsection of the shoe and therefore the top line's integrity will be maintained. The next thing you need to deal with to avoid uh, the misalignment of your top line is to use the right, we've talked about the height of the heel, you should also use the right length of the heel, which is one quarter of the last length, the rule of quarters again. So you find that if you use the appropriate length of the heel, um, there's enough support even to the rigid part of the insole. So you can see, you see that the top line stays properly aligned and only begins to bend when this pressure is applied much more in um, forward where there is no heel to support that area. Of course, that will be mitigated by the pressure being on the toe if you have used the appropriate heel height. So heel height and heel length are absolutely essential for um, avoiding the misalignment of your top line. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a quick video that I did to explain that problem uh, that a viewer of the channel was having. I hope it helped you out. Until I see you guys on the next video, God bless you and have a good one. Peace.